It's never been easier to make a working car in Minecraft, thanks to a combination of Crate Mod and Valkyrian Sky's Clockwork, which has now been released to the public. So that car I just showed you was my first prototype. This is my newest car that has proper controls and a few other improvements. I'll go over what the car can do, and then I'll explain how it works, so that you can either make your own, or just play around with this one. So here's the car. Um, this car can do a few basic things. It can go forwards, and it can turn. It also has a reverse gear, but that's manually activated, and I'll show you how that works a bit later. So this, contrary to my other builds, is not controlled by a controller. I'm using the command chair, which you can see is acting up a little bit. Uh, this is a glitch with the shaders, but I literally can't play without shaders, so you'll just have to bear with it and try to tune it out. So let's go. So I'm just going to use the arrows and I can move forwards, I can rotate right and left, or rather left then right. So now I'm not giving it any input, it's just rolling down the wheels, the wheels are freely turning, and I am back on level ground. Now I'm giving it some power with W. I can turn around using A. So I'm just rotating in place. So you'll notice that the wheels are just turning in opposite directions and that's how I achieve turning. I tried to do some uh, designs that had actual steering but I wasn't happy with how those turned out and the steering was really, it was unstable. It would never stay the way I wanted. So maybe there's a good way to do that and I just haven't found out yet or there's there might not be a good way to do that yet with clockwork. So I can go forward. Oh yeah, and I also have another speed. So if I press spacebar, then the wheels will spin really fast. But I can't always use that because then, you see it kind of makes me pop a wheelie. It makes the front come up and it spins a lot. So it's not super stable. But I can use that for climbing. Let's say I'm trying to go up and I don't have enough power, it becomes useful then. Or let's say I want to go somewhere fast, well then I can start off slow and kind of give it a little bit of extra speed now and then to uh, make me go a bit faster. Okay, so now I'm actually not aligned with uh, the ramp that I want to go up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this lever here and that's going to reverse all the controls. So I'll press W and it'll make me go backwards. I can also turn and I'm just going to line myself to go up this ramp to show you what it's like when it goes up on terrain. All right, let's change the gear and let's go forward. So there are two slopes. This is, this is actually the worst slope. This is 45 degrees. So to go up this one, I'm actually going to need to give it some space bar to give it some extra speed, some extra power, or else it's not going to make it. Or is it? Oh no, this is the easy slope. All right, this is the easy slope. So I can just go up this one leisurely. It's uh, two forwards for every one up. Now I'm at the top. So we'll go down here and then we'll turn around and we'll go up the more difficult slope, the 45 degree slope. All right. Turn this guy around. Now we'll just align ourselves and we'll see what it takes to go up this slope. So you see, it starts to go up, but it can't, right? I need to give it some extra speed. And really, I just adjusted this to my liking. So if you make your own car, you might want to adjust it to have different speeds, right? Because, you know, what works in one situation or one design might not work the same on another. So right now I have, I don't, I'll check later to see what speed it's going at. Actually, I have a speedometer. I can tell you right now. Zero RPM. That's, oh. Ah, yes. Okay, so 51.2. That's because I forgot, but I have a throttle. So if I put it all the way up, I mean, that's, that's going to stop everything. But if I slow it down, if I lower this value, I'll go faster. So it's probably 64. Yes, 64. So I have this running at 64 RPM. Uh, maybe you'll find some speeds are better for you. So onto this chair, this, <laughs> this I, I, I didn't get out of the chair. That's why it made me move. Um, so this command seat that's misbehaving right now because of the shaders. Uh, so how does this work? If I right click on it, I have these four outputs, right? The right side here that controls my right side wheels and the left side controls my left side wheels. So if I go here, you'll see that I have all these 
lines here, multiply. What does all this mean? Well, this this is based on like which button or combination of buttons I press, what output it's going to give out. So the input to the chair comes in from the bottom and then it goes out the sides. And uh, right now I'm just telling it to multiply the speed. So when I go forwards, uh, multiply by negative one so that I go forwards at the same speed as my input shot, which is 64 RPM, zero to 64 because I have a redstone resistor that can adjust the speed. Uh, when I press space bar, well, I'll go three times as fast. So that's my extra speed. So I could adjust that. Maybe, maybe I'll find that three is too much. I can put it to two. Just if I do that, I'll have to make sure to also change it on the other side, or it'll make me spin around. So that's the basics of how I'm using the command seat in this build. All right, so let's just drive in a straight line and see what this looks like. Now I'm giving it some regular speed, and it's a little bit bouncy because we just have blocky wheels. I mean, this is Minecraft. We don't have circles. I would love to have circle wheels, but we don't have that. At least not yet. It's kind of unstable. Eh, just a little bit. I'm kind of bouncing. So maybe, maybe I need to have it go slower. So let's modify the value. There we go. Let's modify the value of this right here. So that's a six out of 15. So that's gonna give us a slower speed. So if I check the speedometer, yeah, that's 38.4 RPM. This might give us a more leisurely pace. Okay, that looks a bit better. I think I'm still, still bouncing. I'm still, am I still turning? I don't know, it's hard to tell. I might be turning a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, hey, it's a car in Minecraft. Isn't this crazy? I mean, I I was super excited when the physics bearing came out. The physics bearing is what makes all this powerful. It's what lets the wheels turn as their own separate, I have to use the right word. It's not an entity. It's I think it's called a ship. In Valkyrian Skies, they're called ships. So it's like I have, I have the body and then I have four wheels, which are four ships. So I have like five different physics imbued objects that are behaving that are acting together so it's really cool how this works All right so the physics bearing it's not like just a, a thing that's a wheel it can be anything that you want in this case I use it for wheels on my car all right let's give it space bar I'm just gonna hold space bar and we're gonna see what happens so you see it spins a lot so it's like like a real car if you give it too much power right away it's not gonna go anywhere the wheels are just gonna spin so that's kind of interesting uh, yes, yeah, so we've got some craters here. I was playing around with create big cannons and I made this whole mess. Let's see how it navigates that. This might be too much to ask of it. Ooh. Okay, I got stuck. But am I really stuck? Oh, see, so I was able to give it more power. Okay, my back wheel, my back left wheel is stuck. Can I rotate myself a little bit? Alright, what if I just give it some more juice? Can we get out of here? <laughs> this is a bit of a mess, but... Oh, I think it's... Well, there's the auto cannon that I was using. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of stuck. But this is... This is not your typical terrain. If I wanted to make something that was more able to get out of this sort of situation, I'd want to make something with bigger wheels, I think. It's actually, we're not out of options yet. Let me reset this down to zero so we have the maximum amount of power. And let's see what happens. Can we get out of here? I th think we can. Something's happening. Oh. I Come on. Oh, yes. Okay, so we got out of there. So, that, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's the first time I tried that. I wasn't sure if that was going to work. But, hey, we got out of there. Nice. All right, so now you've seen what the car can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this into a world with actual terrain where we can try it out there. I'll show you how to, uh, starting from the schematic, bring it into the world and um, do everything that you need to do to be able to use it. So let's head over there. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the schematic of our car and we'll just place it in the world. Now, like I said, this was five separate ships, so we're going to have to add the wheels separately. So, I'm going to place this. I'm going to give it some room so that I have. I'm going to raise this up by... No, this is a good height. Perfect. So, I'll just go ahead and place it in the world. 
So I can do this because I'm in creative. If I were in survival, I would have to use a schematic cannon to do this. All right, I'm gonna add the wheels. So the wheels are, they go out three in each direction. All right. Do I glue them yet? I don't remember if I have to glue them together now or after I've given everything physics. Uh, you know what? I'm going to glue them after. So I've done one wheel. I'm going to go ahead and do the other three and then we can move on to the next part. Actually, I'm going to be smart about this. I'm actually going to make a schematic of the wheel so that I don't have to rebuild them every other time. And I'll also include this so it'll be easier for any of you to assemble this if you want to. Okay, I'll just call that seven tall wheel. There we go. All right, I'll go ahead and grab that and I hope it works. All right, there's two wheels down. Okay. So I've placed the physics infuser on my car. Now I have to blooper glue everything together. All right. I don't know why it's like clicking a second time every time I put the glue. Okay. So now the car is all glued together. It is the moment where we right click the physics bearing. So actually for this moment, I will turn off the shaders and I'm going to do that because the shaders, they kind of ruin the animation of the physics infuser. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the shaders and we should be able to see the cool animation of the physics bearing. So I'm right clicking it. There, the ball is rising. Any second now. Oh, nice. All right, let's get the shaders back. So now this car should be fully imbued with physics. Uh, to check, I'm going to press F3 and B. So we'll see the hitbox. So the hitbox does go all the way around. So we know that this is now imbued with physics. Oh, and looks like I got a bit of grass there, which we don't want the grass, but I'll just, actually, I don't even know if the grass was part of it, but it was in the box. Okay. Let's look at the other wheels. Okay. So now the wheels aren't going to spin on their own. I have to activate the physics bearings. Um, and once I do that, the wheels will become their own ship, their own free floating sort of physics object. So now I'm going to use the regular super glue. All right, that's glued together. So I'm going to go to this bearing here and you see it's not active, right? But I'm going to right click it and oh, it went and it grabbed the wheel and you see the wheel has its own hitbox now. I'm going to go around to get a better view. So when you see that the wheel has its own hitbox, you know that the wheel is its own ship and that the physics bearing has properly activated. All right. So now let's do that for the other three wheels. Oh. Wait, did I mess up here? No. No, that's okay. That's because the car only goes out this far. And you see it's already slanted, so it's already being affected by the gravity. See, it's on a little bit of a of an edge here, and it's just, from its own weight, just sliding off a bit. Okay, we'll do the other two wheels. All right, that's glued up. And we'll go ahead and activate that. So now there's something else we have to do. We have to start the engine. So this is kind of like one of those old timey cars. There is a crank in the front that we have to crank up for the engine to start. So an engine needs a few things. It needs fuel and it needs to be started off to turn. So I have a fuel tank here in the back that is filled up. It uses a liquid called strawberry frosting because in Valkyrian Sky's clockwork, the combustion engines run on various frostings. So strawberry is the best frosting in clockwork. So I'm using that. And that affects how fast your engine turns. Oh, and by the way, see this little yellow square here? That's my center of gravity. So it's the center of gravity for the main car part. 
um, the main part excluding the wheels. So you want your center of gravity generally to be low. If it's too high, then it's going to tip over and it affects how everything's going to handle. Center of gravity is super important when you're making a plane. It's a bit less important when you're making a car, but it's still important. So we've got these pipes. This is the pump that's going to feed the engine. I'm going to give this a spin right here. What we want to see is the arrow pointing towards the engine. Okay. So I'm going to spin this. And this can take a while because it has to pump the fuel into the engine. So you can see the engine shaking and the cylinders are firing. That's a really cool effect, by the way. I really like the engine. Sometimes it can take 10 or more seconds. I don't know why it takes so long, but that's how it works. Um, I'm going to let go. Okay, so that didn't work. I'm going to have to try again. If you want, you can attach a creative engine here, or creative motor, and that'll spin it really fast and you won't have to manually crank it. I put the crank here because I made this to be survival friendly so that you can use it in your survival world um, because of course, you know, you can't have your creative engines in your survival world. So I'm gonna let go and it should spin on its own. No, okay, sometimes you have to break the engine. Go ahead and put it back. And we don't need F3 plus B anymore because we already did what we had to. Okay, is this gonna start it? I wish there was some way to know if I could just stop. Sometimes it starts to spin really fast, but sometimes it doesn't. I'll just spin this for a little while. It should be going in the right direction. Um, sometimes the engine starts, but it starts in the opposite direction of the way that you're cranking. And so it's also making the fuel go the opposite way. If that happens, you just right click the engine with a wrench um, and it'll, it, it'll change the direction in which it spins. Okay, so I'm gonna let go. No. What is wrong? Ah, okay, it's this valve here. So this is, yeah, I put this here. I don't know why I put this here. This doesn't really, <laughs> I, I just put this fuel valve here so that I could turn it off. So I guess when you place the schematic, it starts in the off position. Just make sure to put it in the on position so you don't spend a few minutes turning the crank for nothing. So because the valve was off, the pump was not able to supply the engine with its fuel. Okay, I think it's going on its own now because it's shaking more. I'm gonna let go, and there we go. And the pump is still going in the right direction. So now we can get in the car. So I said I wanted it to be survival friendly. Ah, that's where the crank came from from earlier. So I said I wanted this to be survival friendly. So I put this little elevator here with the rope and pulley so we can lower that down to us. Because in survival, well, you can't fly. So you can just raise yourself back up and get back onto the car. So by the way, this was a water wheel that I built. I have a video on that. It's based on a 500-year-old mining device um, shown in Dere Metallica by, I forget his name. I forget the guy's name. I want to say Vitruvius, but it's not Vitruvius. Vitruvius did a book on architecture, not on mining. Was it Agricola? I think, I mean, I made a video on this. I should know. Anyway, Dere Metallica. It's a 500 year old book on mining, and this is one of the illustrations in it. I have a video on that if you want to check out. Um, yeah, so this is the world from that. Anyway, so let's get in our chair and try to drive this around. Okay. Nice. I'm trying to turn. Oh, and it's hard to turn when you're in a in a rut. So you gotta be on more flat land. Oh. It's not happy. I don't wanna fall I don't wanna fall down there. Put in reverse. Ooh. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, okay, okay. This isn't the end of the world. Let's put it back in forward. No, that's not what I want to do. I just want to flick that switch. There we go. So I was able to get out of the pit earlier. This is easier, I hope, I think. It looks easier. All right, give it some space bar for more power. And we're out. Oh, so this... Ugh. Okay, this is harder than I thought. I thought it was going to be easier to use in the real world. Is it going to fall in the 
lake. Hope it doesn't fall in the lake. No. Okay, so when your car flips over, what you do is you grab a really heavy block. So a block of netherite is pretty heavy. I don't know if it's the heaviest thing, but it does a pretty good job. So I just grab a spot and I do something like this and eventually it's going to flip back over because of the weight. So you see, actually, if I do F3 plus B, you'll see that the center of gravity is moving. And when the center of gravity moves a bit over the edge, that's when it's going to flip over. So it's almost ready to flip over. See? Because when the center of gravity goes past the edge, it has no choice but to fall down. All right, so now I was able to flip my car back over. And I'll just go ahead and break these blocks. And we are back on our feet, or back on our wheels. Turn off F3 plus B, and we can get back in the car. All right, so can we get back up to where we were? I think we'll be able to. Actually, let's turn left a little bit, because it was kind of a pit, and I want to avoid that, because that was really unstable. Okay, that's a big hole. We don't want to... There's a lot of holes in the world. <laughs> the pig wasn't too happy from that. I didn't know this could hurt animals, but now we know. This car should be wider. It has a, a tendency to tip over. So sometimes you just have to cheat and use the Gravitron. So I'm going to... Use the Gravitron to lift up my car and bring it up to a more reasonable place. Okay, I'm going to bring it back here. And, uh, you know, we'll try to go to the snowy area. So, I know you won't have the Gravitron in your, in your survival world. But, you know, I'm in creative, so I might as well take advantage of that. Alright, so let's try to go up to that snowy area. Let's see if we can do that. Or is that too ambitious and maybe we should just stay to the low ground? Which, it's doing a fairly decent job down here. But maybe we want to try to go up to the snow area. I'm going to reorient myself. And we're going to give this one last shot. Alright, the world is a very bumpy place. My next car is going to have bigger wheels. <laughs> and we're just spinning around here but I want to get to the top of this hill we're so close <laughs> and we fell down again so there you have it this is this is the car that I built in Minecraft so I'm gonna leave the schematics in the description of the video so you can go ahead and play with it in your own world uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments, and I'd be happy to answer them. So, thank you for watching.